a Gettish prince named Beowulf, a troll named Grendel, and a revengeful mother, all based on the longest epic poem in Old English. What more do you want? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Friday Fantasy Show from the Bottled Imp, exploring the realms of fantasy. My name is Ken Boyter and today we're going to take a look at Beowulf and Grendel, or Grendel as it probably is pronounced properly. Now this, as you probably have guessed, is uh, loosely based, and I'm going to say that, loosely based on the Anglo-Saxon poem Beowulf, and it stars Jard Butler, and it's directed by Stu... I, I knew I wouldn't be able to pronounce it. Stuiller Gannusgesson. Yeah. So, as you can probably uh, tell, it is, it's actually a joint venture, Canadian and Scandinavian. And this was very kindly bought for me by Julian as a birthday present. So I was very keen and eager to watch it. Let's see if he's wasted his money or not. <laughs> Beowulf and Grendel. Grendel. Grendel? I don't know how you'd say it now. Grendel. He is a troll, Grendel, if you're wondering. What's the setup? What is the story? Well, the troll plays a key part in the story. The whole action takes place in Denmark and it's all taking place in the early half of the 6th century. So yes, it's Anglo-Saxon times. And the story focuses on a Danish king. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Obviously, it's Hogarth. Hograth? Hograth. Hogar is Hogroth, I think. Anyway, he's a Danish king, and the film opens it, and, and what they've done is they put little titles up that say prologue, and then little chapter titles. So it's kind of, you know, that's a nod to the way that the poem is structured. So this is the prologue, and it's the Danish king with his warriors, and he is hunting down a troll. But also, the troll has a son. The son is named Grendel, we later find out, and, well, Yes, you probably guessed it, they do, the, the troll is killed, but the son survives, Grendel survives. So, that's the setup, and as you can imagine, there is a theme, a strong theme that runs through, and that's revenge. Yes, Grendel the troll, the baby troll, he grows up and he seeks revenge on the Danish king and the little village. Now, that's, you know, that's going to be uh, quite heartbreaking for the king. And so the king obviously then wants to seek revenge on the troll. And they are just in this continuous loop of revenge, killing revenge, killing revenge. The other themes we have going on is there is racism. There is racism here because when I watched it, there's no explanation of why the king is chasing the troll. There's no explanation for it. So you, I'm actually, I felt sorry for the troll and his son. Because it felt like fox hunting where they were just, you know, hunting this vulnerable creature. He was, you know, running away, scared. And, you know, and we didn't know why. We didn't know if the troll had done any atrocities to these men whatsoever. It was just because he was a troll, so therefore you can extrapolate this into racism, where you're just doing something to somebody just because they're different, just because they're other. And therefore there's a lack of understanding on your part, and ignorance, because, you know, you're, just because they're not like you, let's just be horrible to them and, and you know, try and kill them or, you know, or, or drive them away from your village. So there must be some sort of history. So I spent the first, I don't know what it was, an hour or so just not knowing and just kind of being on the troll's side and consequently on Grendel's side. Then we have the theme of religion and the religion, it's kind of there in the background. You've got its paganism to begin with, and then there is this Christian priest that comes along, so you have some Christianity vibe going on and, and teachings, and, you know, God is obviously evoked and the protection of God against the troll, and, you know, obviously the troll is heathen. So you have the religious factor running through there. You also have witchcraft, uh, because there is a witch in there, and mysticism and therefore you have this kind of 
you know, separate entity to religion. So you've, I guess, almost that's the antichrist, if you like, and then you've got the Christ figure. So you have good versus evil, and I guess that's the bigger macro subject matter. But then that boils down. That then is reflected in the king or Beowulf as good, and the troll. Grendel as evil, so it kind of reflected in the characters, and it's. I'm now. I'm not read Beowulf. I'm going to be honest. I've not read. I, in fact, I think I read Seamus Healy's version, uh, which I believe was published in the late '90s, and I read half of it, and I can't remember why I didn't finish it. I think it gets quite tricky to actually read. So I probably just gave up and read another fancy book. Maybe it was Game of Thrones. I think it was actually. I went on to Game of Thrones, and I. So I don't know precisely what is in this. You know what they've taken and what they've been liberal about and what they've actually added to it. Um, it I believe there was three new characters that this film has added. So you've got Grendel's father, which is obviously the troll at the beginning. You've got the witch Selma. Um, and you've got Grendel's son. There's a son that's involved as well. So, and consequently, they've had to weave all of those characters and actually have their storylines we woven into the story. Now, I I don't know if I had read the full text, you know, how much of a disruption that would have been, or how much that would actually have added to the story. Um, I guess, you know, in some respects. Was there enough in the text to make it a full-length feature film? So they felt they had to add to it, or maybe did they think, well, it's not dramatic enough. We need to add these characters in to add more, you know, uh, excitement and adventure. I don't really know, but what I do know is that for me, it was a disappointment. The I wasn't connected to the characters. Before we get into all of that, the production values again. I think it's almost like judging a book by the cover. A cover of a book, you shouldn't judge a book by a cover, but, but we kind of do, we get drawn into it. So if it's a fascinating book cover, we'll at least want to pick it up to see if then, you know, the next stage of are you going to buy this or are you going to read it or not. And I think it's the same with a film. That first five minutes is crucial. And it was just something off. They had a really stunning vision, you know, view of the landscape, this, this Scandinavian landscape that was really kind of beautiful. But the lighting was slightly flat, and then it did this kind of weird 360 view, but it wasn't a character looking or anything like that. And then it just stopped, and then we saw some characters rising from the hill. And it just felt a bit weird. I didn't quite understand why they needed that 360 view. If it had been a character looking around, then yeah, maybe so, I can understand that. So the production values were not bad, but they were nothing special. It all seemed a little bland. Um, they, they didn't, there was no, no atmosphere created. The lighting was flat and, and uninspired, and the costumes, although they were good and they, they didn't seem to jar, they felt like they were new. You know, they weren't muddy, they weren't worn, they didn't feel lived in, they didn't feel real. Did just feel like they would just come out of the costume department, you know, out of the truck. So they, they should have muddied them up. People should have had mud on their faces. It sh you know, this is a hard living. If you're a Viking, if you're sixth century, you're going to be, you know, exposed to the to the elements. You're going to be hunting for your food. You're going to be fishing. You're going to get dirty. You're not going to look like an actor. You're not going to look new and modern. Now, I put all this down to, I was thinking about this, why did this film, for me, it was a disappointment, why has it felt flat? And I put it down to the direction of it, the director and his vision. It was uninspired, it was unimaginative, the pacing was all the same, even though this is an adventure, there's meant to be excitement and, you know, uh, action and tension and drama, there was none of that. None of that. There was no real characterization. Yes, we kind of got to know them a little bit because there was talky talky bits, you know, in taverns, and that was quite nice. But the dialogue, oh, the dialogue was atrocious, absolutely atrocious. The first thing that jarred for me was the accents. So that's kind of part of the dialogue, the accents. Too many varied accents, you know. They should have just stuck to one type of accent, and then Beowulf, yes, he comes from a different land, so maybe his accent and his clan could have been slightly different accents. But everybody had seemingly a different accent. And the priest, yes, the priest came from outside, so yes, he could have a different accent. 
but everybody else seemed to be a bit wonky and I'm not sure if they were putting on accents and then they were drifting off. That didn't work. But the dialogue, they dropped the F word. I wasn't expecting modern day swearing. Now I know some of our swear words are Anglo-Saxon. I get that. But it just seemed out of place. It didn't seem like it, that it fitted. And also, at one point, there was uh, somebody mentioned teens. They said when, when, like when they get to that age, when they get to te they're in their teens, teenager teens. That's that's a modern word. You know, I think that was created and, and first used in the fifties, nineteen fifties, not six fifty or five fifty A.D. So it just really jarred. The dialogue was a strange mixture of kind of old English and then modern, almost slang and jargon. So that really then, and if you're trying to recreate something that's meant to be ancient, you have to have everything spot on, otherwise it breaks, you know, the fourth wall is broken and, and, and then you just, you kind of disconnect then from the characters and from the film. It did feel like it was a series of events that happened because of that. I couldn't connect to the characters, I didn't feel emotionally connected. and. Gerard Butler, I don't know if I've seen him in any other films, maybe I have, maybe I haven't, but I just, I thought he was miscast. He wasn't, I don't know, he wasn't warm enough, he wasn't wise enough, I didn't connect with him, he didn't really have any charisma, I didn't feel like he could lead men into battle and be this heroic warrior that he's meant to be. So that was a shame. I think he's probably quite a good actor normally, but it just seemed like it was all surface. There was no real depth to his character. So consequently, because of that, all the action that takes place, it's just all very even. It was just bland, you know? It was kind of like just insipid. And, and that's kind of the worst thing I think a film can be, where it just doesn't really evoke anything. So he didn't even tip into that, oh, it's really bad that it's good category. It was just kind of like, mm, okay, yep, yep, that's happening, that's happening. And for me, this was such a missed opportunity. The story is over 1,000 years old, as far as we know it. The tradition of the story, it's in verse. It would have been passed down verbally, you know, storytellers and, and, and people would have spoken this story. Have you heard about Grendel the troll and how he terrorised a village and how Beowulf, the amazing hero, comes to defeat the troll? You know, really build it up. Get some atmosphere in it. Get some energy. Get some life into it. Now, they could have done it where, you know, they, they're framing it where it opens around a fireplace, around a Vi Viking fireplace, and you have a storyteller actually drawing you in and telling you the story and, you know, little shots of children going, oh, you know, I'm frightened. And then cut to the actual action, cut to the story. So we see the story. And then every now and again, you could cut back to the storyteller, really engaged and passionate about the story. And then we would have been engaged and passionate about the story. But no, they told it like a regular story. The camera angles, the camera shots that they used weren't inspired. They weren't, you know, they were just bland and just, right, we'll place the camera there, go. That's what it felt like. Yeah, put the camera there, go. There was no dynamic angles to it. There was no drama. There was no tension. And that, to me, was a disappointment. It, it just lacked energy and that oomph that I wanted and which is a shame because I'm now going to go back and read the text properly and I'm now I'm, I'm now I want to see other film adaptations surely there's a good film adaptation of this or, or you know this would be great as an anim animation like a monster calls was a film that was recently out of the cinema it's a great book it's a, we've done a review of the book that had an that had animation in it that had imagination it really, the way they adapted the, you know, the book to the film, they did it in an imaginative way. It was dynamic, it was tension, there was characters you loved, you got invested emotionally in it. That's what films are about, that's what books are about. Otherwise, why play, you know, why read them? Why, why go to a play if you're not gonna get emotionally involved? They could have done so much more with this. So for me, it was, a, it was a missed opportunity to take a real classic and ancient text over a thousand years old and turn it into something magical that you would want to watch and want to exist in. You want to be in that world. You want to be Beowulf or maybe you want to be the troll, but you want to be there. Here, I was like, yeah, okay, 
I wonder what's on Facebook. You know, it was that kind of thing. So unfortunately, I, I wouldn't really recommend it. There probably are better adaptations, and I'm on the hunt to find out exactly if there are. <laughs> Beowulf and Grundel. Grendel. Grindel. Yes. It says here, the hero, the monster, the myth. Yeah, maybe in the text when you read it, but certainly not in this film. There is another scene that I forgot to mention where the troll, Grendel, actually plays 10-pin bowling with skulls. He's lined up other skulls and he's knocking them off the cliff with uh, uh, another skull. Really? Really? Ah. And also, I didn't even talk about the troll. It, the makeup was, was uh, it was nothing. It was nothing, it ju and it, it was a little bit rubbery, and it kind of just looked slightly B, maybe C movie grade, you know? They could have done so much better, so much better. This was, I, I think, well, I don't know when Game of Thrones came in, it must have been, no, it would have been before Game of Thrones. But certainly Lord of the Rings was out. They could have done so much more. Anyway, I'm going to stop now before I, you know, give myself a heart attack and get too het up about it. It's a shame. I do want to see a great adaptation of Beowulf. Unfortunately, this wasn't it. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, we have got many, 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 many other reviews and other episodes on our YouTube channel. So check those out. I think it's over 160 now we've got of different things exploring the realms of fantasy. That's what we do. Until next time, remember to keep it unreal, especially if you're Beowulf. <laughs>